In order to make toilet paper, the first thing we're going to need is a screen, because whenever you're making any sort of paper, you've got to have some sort of screen to lay the paper pulp out in to get it to lay flat. So I'm taking some one by twos here and just cutting up to make a simple screen. Rather than using nails, which aren't really strong in end grain or screws, which are even worse, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and peg this with dowel rods. So I'm drawing a 3 8 inch hole here because I'm going to be using 3 8 inch dowel rods. And then we just take some glue, put it on the dowel pins, and pound them in. This is actually a much easier and stronger way of building a frame of this type than using either nails or screws. And it was done for centuries before they actually started changing over those other types of fasteners. Here we are with our finished frame, all four corners are pegged, and here's what the peg looks like. And you can buy these packaged, they're 3 8 by an inch and a half long. So now that I've got the frame, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with just normal screening material. This is the same stuff you would buy if you had to replace a screen on your house. This particular screening material is fiberglass, I've chosen to use that rather than aluminum because I don't want any problems with the, the metal and because the paper pulp will peel off of this easier. So I'm going ahead and nailing this. You can see I can start all four sides so I can get stretched. And then I'll just nail it all the way around. Now I could choose to use a track and use rubber insert like you normally do for screening, but this is easier. And we're just going to go ahead and hit all these staples just to make sure they're good and tight. And then we'll cut off the extra screening and our screen will be ready to go. I've made this screen to fit the bin that I'll be using to lay out the pulp in. So now we're going to need some pulp. We can use just about any kind of paper for this. I've decided to use newspaper. A lot of us collect newspaper, you know, we get the newspaper every Sunday, every day, whatever. We throw it out in the garage, we have a stack of them. Great for stuff like this, great for painting projects, whatever. I'm just going to take and run a bunch of this through my paper shredder. The finer your paper shredder cuts the better but you can use any paper shredder because we're going to turn this back into pulp just like they had in the factory when they were making the newsprint in the first place and we're going to need a bunch of it so I'm tearing up a bunch of newspaper here I've got about three newspapers that I'm chopping up and they'll give me a nice amount of pulp to work with here's my nice shredded newspaper all ready to go on to the next stage and that stage I'm just going to soak it in water so I just put it in this bucket let it soak overnight I've got about 24 hours of soaking and then we want to chop it up real fine so I'm just using an electric mixer here uh, you could use a paint mixer on a drill I had this mixer sitting around it's an old mixer I'm just chopping it up and trying to get as fine as I can uh, it does take a while to chop it up so it takes, take your time with this because you want it as fine as possible and as you can see here we've got a nice gooey mess but there's no real strings or anything left. So now it's time to turn that into some paper. Here's my frame again, and I've got a bin, just a regular storage bin. We're going to put that in the bottom of it. I've made the frame to fit this bin and fill it up with some water. I don't want to get the water over the edge of my frame. I'm just going to have enough in there to spread out the pulp, and that's really what this water is here for. Get the bubbles out of it, and then I'll take my bucket of pulp, and I'll put a couple of handfuls of this pulp in here and break it up with my hand, spread it around. The idea is get, it's going to be kind of floating in there and we want it all the way across the whole screen. We don't want any places where we have any voids. And then once we've got it spread out, we want to very carefully and slowly lift the frame out of the water so that the pulp can settle onto the screen. I'm doing it slowly and we'll take it, we'll just set it up here on the rim and let the water drain out for a little while. I've got my ironing board set up with an old towel on it. We'll put the frame on here. As you can see, my pulp is really wet and it's kind of bumpy. We want to smooth that out. So I'm going to put an old t-shirt in here. You can use any kind of fabric you've got. I just happen to have an old t-shirt. They're pretty absorbent. We want, I wanted something absorbent. I could have used another old towel too, but it'll become smoother this way. And I'm taking a clothes iron set for cotton and just ironing it. Now, this is going to help to dry or at least start to dry my pulp out. But more than anything, I'm flattening I'm flattening that surface so I don't have uh, mountains and valleys on my paper. I want to try and avoid having a lot of wrinkles in my t-shirt and towel underneath because I want this to come out pretty smooth. You know, I could dry it all the way this way. That's going to take a long time, so I decided I'm going to set it on my car to dry. 
So now we've got paper made. It's still in that frame. It's still on the screen. So let's get it off there. So here it is. I'm just going to take a, a wide putty knife and, and chop it loose from the edge. You don't want to scrape this because we'll cut the screen. I'm just trying to break it loose so it's not really stuck to that edge. Flip the frame over and you can see it's already starting to come loose. I'm going to take my fingers and just loosen it up from the frame as much as I can, from the screen as much as I can, all the way around. Couldn't quite get it in the middle there. You can see the change in color, but that's okay. Now I'll take my putty knife again and lift up that far edge where it's really loose. Get my fingers under there, and then all I gotta do is peel it out of that frame. Comes out really easy. You gotta be careful though, it's not real strong paper. This could rip fairly easily, so we wanna be careful doing this. And there we have one piece of paper. Now, obviously, it's a little wide to use for toilet paper, so we're gonna cut it down so it'll fit on a roll. If you don't have rolls, cut up a roll from a uh, roll of paper towels, or cut up a roll from Christmas wrapping paper. Everyone's got some of that in the attic or basement or somewhere, right? needs to be about four inches wide and so here we've got our rolls and now I'm gonna use that to measure the paper now we're gonna cut it into four inch wide strips so I'm just marking with that I could do it with a ruler too but it's easier to just mark it with the roll go ahead and draw some lines here obviously I normally wouldn't use a sharpie for this I'm using that so you can see what I'm doing and we'll just cut it with a pair of scissors Now I've got a couple strips there, and we can just wrap that around the cardboard roll. And then when that roll of paper's on, we'll just take the next strip and we'll roll it up and just keep rolling as many strips as we want. And here we have our roll of toilet paper.